Our next storyteller will be Kelly Suzanne Salisbury. She's a feminist advocate. She's recently joined Soul Collective. She has um, a way with words, a way of looking at things deeply and um, also a lot of light. And so I hope that you will stay with us to keep hearing our live stories. Our next storyteller, Kelly Suzanne Salisbury. Thank you, Emily. Recollections of morning drives with my dad surface when I drive past my alma mater, St. Ignatius College Prep. He drove me to school every morning until I got my driver's license at age 16. A news and talk radio buff, he tuned in daily to WBBM News Radio 78, WLS 7's Don Wade and Roma show and the infamous Rush Limbaugh show. Mom resented the bigotry and right-wing politics of Limbaugh and did not want my mind polluted with his vitriolic rhetoric. She chided dad for listening in. Pops, an unapologetic and proud liberal responded, you can't intelligently argue a point if you only know one side and you can't disagree with a view you don't even know. I've never forgotten this. And although I'm a regular MSNBC viewer, I watch other news networks and even tune in to WBBM once every blue moon for old time's sake. On our drive one morning during freshman year, I begged, dad, can we listen to music instead? We listen to news every morning. He turned the volume down on the radio and said, okay, you can listen to the radio, but let me ask you a couple questions first. He proceeded to quiz me on news topics I should have known, but did not. I could see where he was headed and braced myself for a lecture on being informed and intellectually curious, but there was no such lecture. Seeing the look, of defeat on my face, dad simply gave me a warm smile and turned the volume back up. These lessons from my dad started early in life. And this one in particular took me back to being a six-year-old girl and Harold Washington's first run for mayor of Chicago. My parents were active in local politics and volunteered with his mayoral campaign by registering voters, attending rallies, and co-organizing town hall meetings. They explained why this was a profound moment in our city and for Black people and why they wanted my sister Nikki and me to be involved too. Although I was just six years old at the time, Dad believed even I had a role to play. He asked me to do the honor of designing a banner on behalf of our family for that evening's rally. Excited and full of determination, I went to work and made a banner saying, we want Harold. After showing dad my colorful creation with black letters in every color from the crayon box, he complimented me and hugged me tightly. My sister and I waved the banner with pride that night and dad leaned over and gave me a wink and thumbs up. I felt so important. And here it is 27 years later and that moment still resonates with me. Dad, along with mom, taught me that everyone has something to offer this world. I remember this when I find I may be overlooking or dismissing someone's talents and potential contributions. Fast forward to the first day of my junior year in high school. I passed my driver's test and both my dad and his car had survived my herky-jerky driving that summer. Now a licensed driver, I was eager for my first solo drive to school. Dad was excited too, but slightly apprehensive. Be real careful, sweetheart. Put your seatbelt on and don't drive too close to the car in front of you. 
Make sure to look in your mirrors. Just remember what I taught you and you'll be fine. I smiled and assured him I would do all of the above, and I did. I turned on the radio, of course, although I don't remember if I turned on talk radio or music. Other than feelings of initial nervousness and trepidation, the drive went well and was uneventful. Dad and I reminisced over these memories at my Super Bowl party in February 2011. I joked that being his daughter had turned me into a political and current events junkie, and he remarked how much my driving had improved over the years. We shared a hearty laugh. The Super Bowl came to an end, and Dad was heading out. I had a great time, sweetheart. You and Tracy really know how to throw a party, he said. I hugged him and asked him to call me to let me know he had arrived home safely. As usual, he forgot, so I called him. He picked up and said, I knew that was you. Sorry, I forgot to call. I told him it was okay and that I just wanted to check in and say goodnight. I love you, daddy, I said. And I love you too, sweetheart. Good night. Those were our final words to each other. He died three days later on Wednesday, February 9th, 2011. No words can describe the pain and deep loss I felt for a while, but I carry those memories and valuable lessons from our morning drives with me. Dad taught me how to drive a car but he and the complicated relationship we had gave me guidance and wisdom to navigate life. Thank you.